So the ever broken Mac Pro is still not working. Uh, and in this video, we are going to try to fix the Mac Pro so it is a fully functional machine. Now, to give you some idea about what exactly is wrong with it. So I did an open core legacy patcher installation of Mac OS Monterey. This was a few weeks ago and it started kernel panicking. So right as it was finishing the installation and it boots the system or tries to, uh, it then kernel panics and then is just stuck in a boot loop. And it gets even worse because though I can boot into recovery, uh, it will not recognize any bootable drives. So like if you try to attach a, I don't know, like a bootable USB drive, it doesn't work. So uh, we're going to try to do a complete wipe of the Mac Pro and see if we can get it fully working. So I've got the Mac Pro on the right monitor here, the cinema display, and then on the left monitor, I have a Mac that we're gonna use to do all the USB drive stuff, create the USB drive, all that stuff. It is a 2010 Mac Mini. Let me close out of this. Um, and it is just a, it's, it's a test machine. It's pretty slow. It's got a Core 2 Duo. But we're going to use this to create the Mac OS bootable USB. Now, what I'm going to do is create the bootable USB of Mac OS High Sierra because that is the last officially supported operating system for the classic Mac Pro. So with High Sierra download, we can now create the bootable USB drive. So what we need to do is first see if the USB drive even is gonna work. Let's go to disk utility and just make sure it's mounted. I do have it plugged in. Yeah, here it is, so it's just uninitialized. Let's go ahead and erase it. So now what we need to do is open up a terminal window. Let's drag it over here. We need to drag in the path to the application. So we don't have to type in ourselves. Here is that path here. Install High Sierra. And then we need to go back at space slash contents, resources, create, install media, dash dash volume. And then we can specify volume here. We need to you can't attach the dash dash no interaction argument if you want. There we go. So now it is proceeding to erase the disk. Probably close out of the app store here. And then now it is copying the installer to the disk so we can monitor that if we go to the disk tab. And we can also just search create install media and we can see how much data is writing per second down at the bottom so we're just gonna let this run it's gonna take quite a long time because this is a usb 2 flash drive over usb 2 usb port uh so this is going to take a while and i will resume the video when it is done all right that took a lot longer than i thought um i try the high sierra installer and I guess it was corrupt or something because it said it couldn't copy base system.dmg, which is obviously kind of the foundation of Mac OS installer. So I just took El Capitan and we'll just install El Capitan on the Mac Pro. But it did work. So now all we can do is just inject this drive. I'm going to hook everything up to the Mac Pro because I don't have anything hooked up to it. And then we will install El Capitan. All right, so I hooked everything up, put the original graphics card back in so we can see the regular boot screen. And now we're gonna see if this will work. Let's hit the button and hold down Alt, which happens. Okay, after what seemed like an eternity for this thing to boot off USB 2, we are back in the installer. So if this doesn't work, then I don't know how we're going to get OS 10 on here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to wipe this, call it, I don't know, 
I was not untitled. Okay, so now we can do this. And hope that Open Core is actually going to work on El Capitan. I think it does. So here we go. I haven't used El Cap since it was like an actual operating system. Okay, a quick update. I've tried to install El Capitan now three times. Can't get it on. I noticed just out of the blue that something is wrong. I don't know what is wrong, but something is wrong because that light, I don't think, should be steady. I think that light indicates a problem with the RAM. But I actually don't know, so I'm gonna take a look at the reference guide and see what the heck this is. And what makes this situation even weirder is that I looked it up and it says that that light has something to do with the CPU temperature. Um, I totally don't know. Uh, let's try to move the system again. I, I, I disconnected the USB drive, so the USB drive is not connected. It chimes. So this is really weird. Uh, and I think we'll get a flashing folder, but let's just open up the Mac Pro. <sighs> yep, the light is still, still there. Let me try to feel the heat sink. Heat sink's not even hot. I have no idea what the deal is. Um, I might just ignore this. I have no idea, but this seems to be an issue. Yeah, we can see we've got our flashing folder because uh, we don't have a, any drive that this can boot to. Okay, I highly doubt this is the problem, but I have some more RAM. Uh, this is still 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm just going to try to replace all of this RAM. I really don't think that's the issue, but um, I'm just going to do that anyway um, because I want to be just absolutely sure that nothing is wrong. And I know this RAM works. RAM is all in. I'm going to try to put the CPU tray back in and see uh, if that boots, I really don't think that's going to fix it. Uh, I'm just going to have to create another Mac OS USB drive, I guess. Okay, I put the CPU tray back in. Let's see if the system boots. I still have the side cover off, but first I need to make sure that, see what that light does. Might take a little longer to post, I don't know. Whoa! So that fixed, I'm very confused. The light is off. I also did a PRAM reset. Uh, but obviously there's no drive. So let me, I'm gonna try installing LCAP again. Let me just, I'm gonna hook up the drive here. It should just auto boot because there's no other drives that it can boot to. So I'm going to try installing LCAP again now that that light is off. All right, that took a long time, but now we have a working installation of OS 10 here. Great. Uh, and go up to about this Mac, make sure that all 16 gigabytes of RAM are detected. We have both of our drives detected. So now it is time to do some open coring. And I'm going to use the same USB disk uh, that I used 
for the El Cap installation now that this is working, and we will proceed from there. All right, after what seemed like yet another eternity, waiting for the installer to copy over USB 2, which took like 45 minutes, we are finally on a uh, an installation. I've got the drive down there still. Uh, I did actually install LCAP on the SSD, and then I just installed the open core on this flash drive, and then what I'm going to do is, when it's done, install OpenCore back onto the, uh, the hard drive. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to give up. So this is, be, just started the installation. I'm going to say it's probably going to take another 45 minutes, probably. So maybe at about 9 o'clock, uh, it'll be done. Man, this is a lot harder than I thought. Uh, it's going into six hours, this project. Uh, it's almost 10.30 p.m. Uh, basically, what happened was I installed Big Sur. That was the last clip you saw. The installation went fine, but I forgot that OpenCore has this, like, auto-patching feature, and so I had the stock video card, the Radeon HD 5770, connected at the time that I was installing Big Sur. And uh, if you know anything about OpenCore, that means that it auto uh, it automatically installed the patches for the 5770. So then when I put the W5500 back in, booted the system, there was no graphics acceleration and I tried to revert the root patches, and it said it failed. It was something like it failed to bless the volume. I can't remember exactly what it said, but like it failed to run like some command uh, to do with that. And so now I just went into recovery, and I'm reinstalling Big Sur. Now, the other thing is I did install uh, OpenCore to the hard drive, or to, to the SSD, I mean. I don't, I hope that doesn't have an impact on the whole root patching thing. It's still, as you can see, it's still in the first phase. It hasn't rebooted back to the Apple logo. So we're going to have to see what happens. And this is the second time I've installed Big Sur tonight. And I hope I don't have to do it again. Uh, because this does take like 45 minutes uh, at least to install. So we'll just see what happens here. Uh, I'll keep you posted. All right, so it is, as you can see, 11, 12 p.m. I started this at a little before 5, so it's been uh, quite a long time. Big Stir installation just finished. We have the W5500. That is detected correctly. We have the... Uh, two drives so everything is good now let me just check something real quick now it did retain which is interesting all of the data activity monitor doesn't want to show up in the spotlight so i guess i'm just gonna have to do this this way whoa i don't know why dashboard that's Weird. Doesn't work. Huh. Anyway. GPU shows up. CPU shows up. Got all eight cores or eight threads. Yeah. So now I'm just going to have to test out some programs and see what happens. But my God, was that a pain. I would not ever want to do that again. So, there we go. That is the successful, maybe, uh, repair, not repair, but reinstallation of Mac OS on this 5.1 2010 Mac Pro. So, thanks for watching.